a boy moves from Tokyo to Hokkaido and meets a very hot gal in the middle of all the snow. And at the beginning of it all, a boy watches the dense snowfall from the car window when he receives a message from his father, informing him that he will not be able to pick him up, so the boy must return home alone. And as he walks a little further, he asks the driver to leave him there, as he is already close to his destination, and when observing the landscape, he feels a great peace and freedom, after all there are no people or cars in that area, and this makes it very very different from Tokyo. However, the dense air of Hakeo causes him enormous discomfort, and so he comments to himself that his father's choice in moving there at this time of year was not a very good one. And to make matters worse, he notices that his cell phone's battery is about to run out, and suddenly a blonde girl appears in his path, and the boy comments that she would be a gyro because she lives in Hokkaido, after all for having her legs out in this cold. She really isn't an ordinary person. Then she looks at him, and then he shows her a path on the map and asks her how to get to her destination, and after she tells him the path, he leaves the place, but the girl stops him and asks if he intends to go on foot. He responds yes, and she informs him that it will take him three hours to get there, and upon hearing this he is surprised, as he had no idea it would take so long to go to a neighboring district, and the girl explains that the Kitami region it's very big, and when he comes to his senses, he regrets having decided to take the taxi so early, after all, he thought he would walk a short distance distance to get to the other district, but the boy raises his head and says he just needs to take another taxi now, but she informs him that taxis don't go there. But he tries to insist, and asks if it's possible for a taxi to come to him if he calls him on the phone, and she says that with good luck the driver will arrive in about 30 minutes, so the boy accepts that he's in trouble. However, the girl invites him to wait for the bus together, and says that the bus will arrive in 5 minutes and will also stop at his destination, and upon hearing this he gets excited and thanks her for saving him from waiting 30 minutes that way. Cold. And then she asks where he is from, and the boy explains that he moved there from Tokyo, and when she finds out where he came from, she is amazed and asks why he moved there from Tokyo so suddenly. And he says that the change occurred for family reasons, but she states that compared to Tokyo, Kidami is a very average place, so she deduces that he must find all his fellow countrymen Taki. But the boy says that he actually thinks otherwise, because that place brings him a lot of peace, and the girl's words remind him of when he was being bullied, and at that time the insults were also related to him being tacky and not popular, so he still even though he lived in Tokyo, he still remained tacky in the eyes of many. But being in new lands, he feels relieved that people haven't yet discovered that he's corny, so she's interested in finding out more about him, and asks his age, he then responds that he's 16. And upon hearing this she gets excited and says that they are the same age, and then she asks which school he is going to, and the boy reveals that he will study in Hokurio, at which point she gets excited again, as he will also study at the same school, school than her. And then the girl takes him by the arm, leaving him slightly red, but he allows her to continue touching him because of the cold, so she asks him to loosen up more and talk in a less formal way. And when the girl sneezes, he worries, and asks her if she's okay, and she says yes, but when he sees her with a runny nose, he hands her a tissue. And although the cold is killing him, the boy appears to be excited, as he has never had so much contact with a girl while in Tokyo, and this makes him wonder if all the girls in Hokkaido are like that too. And while he travels in his thoughts, she keeps calling him, and seeing that the boy isn't going to answer her, she decides to put ice inside his shirt, so he complains about the cold, but when he looks at her, he ends up accidentally saying that she she is very pretty, and it makes her blush with embarrassment. And in the midst of this awkward atmosphere, her bus arrives, and before she leaves, she asks the girl's name, and she says she is Fuyuki, Minami, and then she leaves, saying that she will see him at school later. And with that the boy celebrates and says he's happy to have gone to Hokkaido, so his father sends a message asking if he had arrived yet, and upon reading this he remembers that he should have gotten on the bus with her. And when Minami thinks about him, and says that it would be great if they fell into the same class, and the next day, he goes to his new class, and introduces himself as Shiki Tsurbesa, and he tells his new colleagues that he moved there from Tokyo the day before. And after the presentation, the teacher tells him to sit in the row next to the corridor, and when he looks around he doesn't see Minami, and deduces that she is in another class, and this makes him slightly sad, but Shiki tries to convince himself that who doesn't like her, because his preference is for serious, dark-haired girls. And he believes that he was only surprised by her because he had never met a girl like Minami before, but when talking about her, the girl appears in the room, and upon seeing him, Minami immediately goes to talk to him, and the teacher complains and he says,
says he was late again. And meanwhile Shiki is surprised, as he didn't expect these movie cliches to happen to him too. And in the middle of class, she says that his name is very beautiful, and to make him even more crazy, Minami calls him by his first name, and he says that only his family and friends call him Tsubasa. Then the class continues, and Shiki starts to shiver from the cold and wonders how people can study in these conditions, and then he feels like he's going to end up catching a cold. And then Minami notices that he is cold and gives him an extra cloak, so he can warm up, and he notices that the cloak is warm for her body, and it also smells really good. He feels like he's receiving a direct hug from her, but after thinking too much he decides to cheer himself up, otherwise his hormones will take away his concentration. And when the class ends, he thanks her for the cloak she lent him, and then she smells her cloak, and Shiki says she can wash it if she wants, but she says she's only smelling the cloak so she can smell the added scent of them too. And well, she says that he can do something to thank him for the mantle. In this case, she wanted him to accompany her when she left school, because on that day there would be no one to do that. And then Minami says that it's okay for them to be stuck together. After all she already considers him a very close person, even though she met him the day before. He then asks where she lives, and Minami says that she will take a locomotive to get home, so he would only need to accompany her to the station. And halfway through, she asks if he has a girlfriend, and he firmly denies it, and the girl bursts into laughter, finding it hilarious that he emphasized that he's single. And she asks where he usually goes on dates in Tokyo, and Shiki says he goes to Harayuku or Shinokubo, but he remembers that he's never had dates. And Minami is surprised by the answer, as she thought he would go to Shibuya on those occasions, and he explains that on dates it's better to go to a place where you can eat and go for a walk. He then asks Minami which places she goes for a walk in Kitami, and she explains that the winter is very cold, so their meetings only happen at home. And then Shiki notices that they are very direct, and after thinking about it a little the boy decides to let go of these impure thoughts, and when they take a few more steps, they finally arrive at her starting point. Then Shiki says goodbye, but before letting him go, Minami asks him to come to her house the next day, after all tomorrow they won't have classes, and she says she wants to know more about Tokyo. However, he doesn't know what to answer, as things are moving faster than he expected, and upon seeing him very thoughtful, Minami deduces that he doesn't feel like going to her house, but he takes courage and says that he will go to her house, her house the next day. Then the girl smiles again, and after exchanging contacts Shiki returns to his house, and the next day he stops in front of her house, and becomes thoughtful about this situation, as this is the first time he will go to a woman's house. Girl. Furthermore, he remembers that his family cannot find out about this, otherwise he will be in trouble, however he feels that the temptation to be there is is much greater. Then he calls for her, and Minami tells him to come in, and as soon as the two see each other she informs him that her parents are not at home, and then she calls him to the living room, and as he steps onto the carpet he feels something warm on his face, her foot, and Minami explains that her living room has floor heating, while her bedroom is colder, due to having a small heater. And then he sits down, and he's relieved, because he doesn't think they're going to do anything immoral in the living room, but she starts to tease him with touches and asks what they're going to do now, and the boy is left without a doubt, answers, and then she goes to the kitchen to get him something to drink, and when drinking that juice, Shiki feels a similar taste to some yogurt drinks he used to drink, and meanwhile, Minami ends up spilling some juice on his clothes when trying to pour it out, so she leaves him alone and goes to change, but when she returns, Minami appears in an even more provocative outfit, driving the boy crazy, and then she explains that she dresses like that at home because of the heat it is there, then Shiki tries to change the subject, and says that he brought a movie from home for them to watch, and when the girl goes to play the movie for them to watch, another ecky scene happens. And in the middle of the movie, an awkward preaching scene starts, and obviously Shiki starts to get tense, and then she touches him lightly with her foot, and when he looks at her, he discovers that she was sleeping this whole time, and Shiki notices that she is very careless for sleeping next to an unknown man. And after a while she finally wakes up, and Shiki gets ready to leave and says he will leave the DVD with her, so that Minami can finish watching the film. And when he was on the way home, she runs after him and apologizes for having fallen asleep in the middle of the movie, but he ignores this and says that she will catch a cold if she goes out in these clothes in this cold. Then she takes his hand and says she will buy him something to eat, as a way of making amends for what happened. 
And right before class, Fuyuki starts doing a snowman and when she sees that he looks really good, she takes out her cell phone to post a story and in that she takes a beautiful photo with her apparent smile and posts it. And on the way to class, she sees Tsubasa reading a poster and without making a fuss, she comes close to him and whispers in his ear, asking what he would be looking at and that takes the poor guy's heart from 0 to 100 in a second. And then she notices that he is looking at the poster for the cultural festival that will take place soon and she asks if he would be interested and the boy says that since it is this weekend he believes it is worth going and taking a look and upon hearing him say that Fuyuki already smiles and tells Tsubasa that she could accompany him on this and the boy is completely lost because this type of outing with a girl can only mean one thing meeting and at Fuyuki's house while she is having dinner with her family they notice her father's delay in returning and their mother comments that her father will have the next day off and so it would be a good idea to go on a walk with her family. And the two even agree, but Fuyuki says that she will have to pass, as she is going to meet a friend at the winter festival that same day, and this makes her little sister sad, but her mother comments that she has always liked festivals and has always I went during elementary school. And then, Big Daddy arrives and Fuyuki stays there thinking about what was said, and the next day, while walking in the cold, Tsubasa remembers Fuyuki's message from the previous day, where she told him to meet her at 11 in front of the station. And the boy is finally finding it hard to believe that he will actually have a date with her, and he even pays attention to the cute emoji she used in the message, and with his blood already concentrated in his waist, he opens a photo that she left in the conversation, and when he sees her next to the snowman, looking all pretty, MLK almost goes to the link in bio, and he thinks he should calm down, because if he continues like this, before finding her, he won't come back alive, and in this he tries to organize his mind, making him only think about the festival and enjoying Hokkaido, and and he tries to convince himself that she called him just because she was nice and because she saw that he had no friends. But everything falls apart when she arrives to meet him. The guy almost has a meltdown seeing how beautiful she looks and he feels that the attack this time was powerful and he wonders if that is the outfit she wears casually. And thinking about it, he says that it's even strange because she always shows so much skin that seeing her covered up makes everything even more intense and to that she says that she looks beautiful and asks if she agrees and after calming down a little, he says that she yes it is beautiful. But he says it coldly and she ends up feeling like she forced him to say it, and at that he changes the subject, asking about her childhood experiences at the festival, and he gets excited about the ice statues and things that he would only see it in Hokkaido. However, seeing the boy's excitement, she tells him not to be so excited, but she says it shyly and he ends up not listening, but she just carries on. And after walking to the location, they arrive at the festival, which was really lively lively, and when Fuyuki was going to say discouraged that it's just that, he overrides her speech and says that it's incredible, and shows that he is super excited about the party. And at this she is surprised, but follows his excitement, and seeing a statue, she says that the statue seemed bigger when she was small, and then, he decides to take a photo of the sculpture, but she enters the middle, grabbing him to take a photo couple self-style. And when she grabs his arm, he feels that she smells really good and looks like an idiot, and when she looks at the photo, she notices the face the crazy guy made, leaving him full of shame. And while he is freaking out, she smells a good smell and asks if he feels it too, and seeing that they are both hungry, they go to eat something, and while he is in line, he decides to choose a breaded hot dog to eat, and even orders sugar to be added to that thing, and with Fuyuki, she is eating a yakitori, and he arrives calling her, so she asks if she could have a bite of his hot dog, and he even lets her. But when he sees her approaching with her mouth wide open, something inside him trembles, and so she takes a bite and says it was delicious, but after she bites, he begins to see her bite as something immoral. And he still worries about the indirect kiss he would give her if he bit that part, but he forces himself to act like a normal person and just bites, but when he does that, he notices Fuyuki looking at his face all red, and she still gives a mischievous laugh. And he asks what happened, and she says he's too easy to read, and then goes on his way, and so, they continue the date having fun in an absurd couple vibe until they sit down to drink Amazake. And she asks if he's enjoying it, but he says nothing about the snow and the place, making her laugh. But after getting serious, he says he's only lived in Tokyo and that's why he's never had contact with anything like that. He says that it's still Japan, but it's completely different, and ends by saying that he loved spending that day there, thanking her all excitedly, and this moves the girl, who blushes all over hearing this. And after 
After a sip of Amazake, she says that it had been a while since she went to a festival and that's why she was scared, scared of him getting there, seeing what it was about and asking if that was all, and she says that this worry has already gone away. Your heart. Because when she is with Tsubasa, he makes her like Hokkaido even more, and she says that he reminds her how good this city is, besides seeing him happy, makes her happy too, and she thanks him back for going to the festival with him. And this creates a critic in the little boy's heart, and as she continues talking about love Loving her city, she ends up losing her balance and threatens to fall, but our nerdy knight runs and grabs her, saving her from the fall. But in the adrenaline, they are face to face, face to face and panting with their mouths open close to each other, and this leaves the lovebirds full of shame, and when they get up, she thanks him, but ends up doing it in dialect. And returning home, Tsubasa asks her if they could ever go out like that again and she sees this as an opportunity to mess with him, asking if he wants to go out with her that much. And then after making fun of him, him. she says she still wants to go to the Sapporo festival someday, and he gets the message. And at school, at lunchtime, she arrives at his table and says that she brought something for him, and then takes some noodles out of her bag and says that she wants him to try it because at the festival, she saw how his eyes shone when eating something new. And therefore, she wanted to introduce him to Mori a little about the culture of Hokkaido and when he realizes that she noticed his excitement, Eek becomes shy, and with that she begins the noodle alchemy with boiling water that she already had with her in a Stanley bottle. And after waiting the sacred three minutes, he is surprised by the practicality of the deal, but she says that this is where the trick comes in, as the cup noodles in question come with a Chinese soup broth. And she says that with that, he can make soup with the broth that would be thrown away, and with that, she gave him a full and not at all nutritious plate, and in that, he is impressed with the smell and appearance of it. And seeing it all, she takes the chopsticks and takes a portion to his mouth, and when eating, he says that it is very good, and begins to narrate the qualities of the noodles, but she talks about something else, saying that with this one now, she paid for the scene she did with him at the festival. And after talking about it, she notices him blushing instantly, asking if he is excited about the memory, but he denies it, and she changes the subject, asking about his lunchbox and asking asking to see. And when he opens it, it's a normal anime a bento, but this makes Fuyuki all excited at the sight, asking if it would be New Year's food, and the girl's excitement is so much that she even asks if she can take a photo of the dish. However, this leaves him confused, wondering if this is so unusual, and seeing that she doesn't stop him, he asks if she wants to taste some, and when she takes the meat, she begins to narrate how beautiful the piece is. And when eating, she finds the meat incredible for its flavor and tenderness, and even thinks it would be a divine steak, but he says it's just pork that his grandmother made, and this makes Fuyuki even consider marrying his grandmother to eat this forever. And after the meal, they thank each other, but Tsubasa says that it was even more incredible because he had never eaten cup noodles in his life, and he says that everything he does with Fuyuki is a new experience and that scares the girl. And she asks if he had never eaten noodles before, and he says no, other than going to a girl's house, going to a convenience store or going to a festival with a friend, everything is new to him. And she is incredulous, and says that this, added to that lunchbox from before, makes her think he is a spoiled rich boy, and she says that she had already felt that way about him, but it was to be expected, as he is from Tokyo. However, he says that she has the wrong impression, and in that, she says that only that would explain this creation, but he claims that his family is not rich or anything, but she decides to come clean and asks to go to his house today, last time this was ending SUS. And he even finds it strange, but in the end, she ends up going with him anyway, but he blames her request, and the angle she used for it, but he feels worried, because his grandmother is home today. And then, she calls him further and when he looks, she looks like Napoleon lost the war and he freaks out seeing this, and she is not satisfied and calls him to enter that igloo, saying that some children must have left it there. And then, she drags him into the hole and in that tight situation, she starts saying strange and double meaning things, asking if this was his first time and if it's warm in there. But he complains that it is tight, but she tells him to come closer, but he says it's still tight, and says he was going to leave, but she says he just got in, and as he moves, she makes some very suspicious sounds. And he tells her to stop, and in that, he wonders why he is in this stimulating situation with her, but as he was about to pop the champagne, he hears someone calling his voice. And when he comes out, he sees his grandmother, and she immediately asks what he was doing in there, because she heard some pretty heavy things coming from there, and then, he thinks he needs to think 
think about something and lie quickly. But Fuyuki grabs him and says that Tsubasa was too quick and she adds that he should have enjoyed his first time more and this breaks them both and as if nothing had happened she asks if he knows that lady. And then she finds out that she is the boy's grandfather and introduces herself apart from saying that she ate some of his lunch but the lady doesn't seem to like that but when Fuyuki says that it was very tasty she softens a little. And then she asks what her relationship is with her grandson and when she would answer that they are friends Tsubasa takes the lead and says that they are just classmates but she doesn't like that very much and just agrees with him. And seeing that it's starting to snow she says that she needs to go besides that she and Tsubasa still have things to do and in that she even tries to talk but Tsubasa stops her and moves on. And he keeps thinking that he ruined everything because he doesn't have a firm hand with his grandmother. He says that she hates it when people are too open in relationships and he thinks that this must be the end of his new life in Hokkaido. But the girl reappears right there and says that they really need to wait and she asks why his grandmother is using an umbrella and she says that she has one because of the snow but Fuyuki says that she shouldn't do that as she must have both hands free in case she slips and says that she could end up with a fracture just like what happened to her grandmother besides that she can remove the snow just by running her hand and she continues giving tips saying that the path ahead has thin ice and that could make her fall and she says that going the other way would help her get there faster and safer and she says that she could show the way so she takes grandma's bag and says that she should take more care of her hands than making this food so delicious and then she starts to walk but Tsubasa says she can take the bag but she hands it over while pouting and he asks if she's mad about something but she says they have no reason to be mad at someone who is just a colleague class however he explains the situation with his grandmother and whispers in her ear that Fuyuki is a very important friend and she starts teasing him asking if she is very important to him and arriving at his house she is impressed by the size of the mansion and then his grandmother calls her to come in and thank her for teaching her that way and then inside she begins to think that she has softened with age and decides to understand that if Tsubasa chose her she must be a good girl but when she saw her bringing them tea the girl is taking photos of everything in his house and making fun of Tsubasa saying that she knew the boy was one of those rich people and she immediately changes her mind but when she sees how much fun her grandson is having she feels like she needs to give Fuyuki a vote of confidence and at school they start to arrange pairs for the ski class and upon receiving his place he sees that he is behind Fuyuki and notices that his partner will be Akino. And on another day, Fuyuki they re excited to ski next to Tsubasa, and because it's Hakuyado, they'll spend an entire day of class just skiing. And then she asks if he had ever skied before, and Tsubasa says no, because he is very scared, and upon hearing this, Fuyuki starts to make fun of him, after all she has been skiing since elementary school, so she is very good in that. But besides her, the girl claims that everyone in Hokkaido is good at skiing, and Tsubasa explains that in Tokyo it almost never snows, and when it does occur, the snow never accumulates that much. Fuyuki then asks if Sayuri is also excited about skiing but the girl doesn't say anything and Tsubasa finds this strange, after all the girl gets along with everyone and from that he deduces that the two must have some problem between them. And when asking how Fuyuki is, the girl explains that she wants to be friends with Sayuri as she believes that the two can be great friends if they try and Tsubasa understands that they are not fighting as he had thought. And Fuyuki says that she likes her a lot, but still the girl always ignores her when she tries to talk, and upon hearing this the boy notices that she is really very determined. And then Fuyuki starts to suck up to Sayuri, saying that the girl has very beautiful hair, as well as being very stylish in everything she does, and she describes her as a dark-haired gyro, but upon hearing this, Tsubasa notes that all these characteristics mentioned by Fuyuki are opposite to the girl's real appearance. And upon seeing him looking so intently at Sayuri, she decides to turn around and continue the journey and when they arrive at the skiing location the mentor tells everyone to divide into groups A, B and C according to each person's ability. So he goes to Tsubasa and suggests that he go to class C as their pace will be easier for him than he has ever avoided but he believes that he should first practice walking in a flat place. And then the mentor tells him to go with Sayuri as they will both do the same thing and he says that he will take care of class C but he still guarantees that he will watch them from time to 
to time too. Then the mentor leaves them alone and tells him to be careful, and then Tsubasa feels that this is the perfect time to talk to Sayuri and get her to be Fuyuki's friend. But when trying to get closer to her, Sayuri puts on her headphones, Tsubasa notices that she apparently doesn't want to be disturbed, and with that in mind he decides not to insist so as not to make her angry. Furthermore, Tsubasa feels a little intimidated trying to talk to the girl, and at the same time he doesn't understand this strange feeling he has for her. And while the boy travels in his thoughts, Sayuri takes his first steps with the ski, and he starts practicing too, and little by little Tsubasa notices that if he shifts his weight from one leg to the other, it becomes easier to move. And suddenly, he hears Sayuri falling to the ground, and so he goes to her to help her, but she gets up on her own, and says she doesn't see the point in needing to learn to ski, and when she looks up, Tsubasa sees Fuyuki dominating her speedboat. And when she gets closer, the boy shows all his excitement at seeing her skiing, and then Fuyuki says that she had already made it clear how good she was at it. And upon noticing her from afar, the teacher sends her back and tells her not to do those jumps with the boat, and meanwhile Tsubasa stays behind calling her incredible. And suddenly Sayuri exchanges her first words with him, and asks if Tsubasa is dating Fuyuki, and upon hearing this he tries to deny it and asks why she thinks that. And Sayuri says that they were very close on the bus, but he explains that Fuyuki was just teasing him, as usual, but Sayuri says that her interaction was more than just a joke. And then Sayuri describes Fuyuki as a popular, role-playing and extroverted girl, basically a gyru, and upon hearing this Tsubasa feels a lonely aura emanating from Sayuri. In this she reveals that Fuyuki has everything that she doesn't have, and so she decides to put this small talk aside and goes back to practicing. And meanwhile Fuyuki is in charge of helping someone ski in that area, and she introduces herself as the rescue gyru from the snowy mountain, and upon feeling trust in her the boy decides to accompany her. And returning to Tsubasa's group, the mentor apologizes to them, and says that he ended up being very busy with class C, and that's why he ended up not paying attention to them, but the boy says it's okay, and asks when the break will be. Lunch. Then the mentor reveals that most of the students are already on break, and upon hearing this Tsubasa notices that the teacher completely forgot about him and Sayuri, but the teacher let him start his break now. And when they return to the bus, Tsubasa decides to eat elsewhere, as he thinks it would be strange to be there alone with Sayuri, but when he arrives at the cafeteria, he notices that his chopsticks are left in his bag. So he goes back to the bus to pick them up, but when he gets there, he sees the girl taking off her shirt, and then he apologizes for the inconvenience, and mentally he deduces that she was just changing, as there was no one on the bus she could do it safely. Then he explains himself and says that he had no intention of seeing her, as Tsubasa was just there to get the chopsticks that he forgot in his bag, but he decides to leave that there too and starts heading towards the exit, and then she takes him by the arm. And as they sit down to eat, Tsubasa wonders what she wanted to talk to him about, and then he notices that it's been a long time and she still hasn't said a single word, so he starts to get scared because Tsubasa doesn't know Sayuri, and doesn't know how she can act in this situation and suddenly she decides to say what she wanted, and explains that she sweats a lot, and because of that she has always been embarrassed to play sports, as it would result in a large pool of sweat on her body. But by exempting herself from sports for half a time, Sayuri started to fall behind, in addition to that there were also many other things that she didn't learn to do well and this started to make her lose her confidence, and finally, Sayuri started to avoid everyone. But even so, she always forced herself to improve in everything, and the result of that that was the fall she took during the ski class, and to make things even worse, Tsubasa caught her trying to dry herself, and that for Sayuri was the last straw. Water. And then he apologizes again for that, but she says it's not his fault, after all, it was she who wasn't careful to dry herself at a more opportune moment, so he asks why she's saying all this to him without they at least get to know each other. And Sayuri says that saying these personal things to him is much better than talking to someone she knows, and besides, she claims that they are both in the same situation because she is a girl without friends and he is the lonely transfer student. And to make her even safer, she says that he's a very straight-laced boy, so he probably wouldn't go around spreading what she said to him with the intention of making fun of her. And in the middle of the conversation they hear her cell phone ringing in her bag, so Tsubasa leaves her free to check it, and upon seeing what it was, Sayuri discovers that it was the update of a game she had started playing again, called Sis plus SP on Shueda Witch. And upon hearing this tongue twister, Tsubasa shows that she doesn't know what it's about, and then she explains that it's a fighting game with several famous characters, so Sayuri deduces
realizes that he knows the game. However, Tsubasa says no, as he doesn't play much, so she throws the tablet on his lap and tells him to play, but as expected he quickly loses, and Sayuri notes that this is in fact the first time he has played this game. Game. Then she approaches him to teach him how to play, and while she talks he is tripping, and then she apologizes for looking so stupid around him, and Sayuri says she wants to be able to get closer to people, and that's why she you care a lot about your appearance. However, she claims that her essence is what Tsubasa just saw, and because she is like that, many people end up getting scared before she even realizes that she got too close, and that's why Sayuri ends up running away and hiding in something she's really good at, which in this case is playing games, but it makes her feel very pathetic. However, Tsubasa tries to calm her down and says that she is nothing like that, after all he thinks it's great that she is trying to do something to change, and he says that both her appearance and her personality are unique and excellent, therefore, Tsubasa says she is happy for having met her. So he asks her to teach him more about games too, and so she is willing to do that, but in return Sayuri asks him to call her teacher, and as they practice the game a little more, Tsubasa is impressed with how addicted she is. She's into games, so Sayuri guarantees that he'll also be able to do what she does, he just needs to practice. And upon hearing this, Tsubasa gets excited to train more until he can play like her, but he can only beat the weakest CPU in the game, and when he looks at the clock he notices that they are already late to return to class. And then Tsubasa asks her to try skiing with him, Fuyuki notices the two climbing the mountain to finally try to ski for real, but when they see themselves so far from the ground, the two are terrified by the altitude of the place, and Tsubasa notices that the the ski resort appears to be quite huge from above. Well, Sayuri asks him why Tsubasa wants to ski, and he explains that he started challenging himself to try several new things in Hokkaido, and as for the track thereon, it's still the easiest one to tackle, and he reports that the teacher gave him some tips before they went to lunch. As for his motivation to ski, Tsubasa responds that it was Fuyuki who encouraged him to do it, after all she was the first friend he made as soon as he moved there, and because of that she takes him to all kinds of places. And upon seeing him talk so much about her, Sayuri comments that he really likes Fuyuki a lot, but he says that she is just a normal friend, but Sayuri claims that the fact that he denies this so much only makes him seem more of a liar. However, she believes that Fuyuki could be a good person, after all she tries to talk to Sayuri a few times, but she believes that when Fuyuki tries to talk to her, something must be wrong. And that's why she ends up not knowing the right way to answer her, and when they reach the top of the mountain, Tsubasa makes a bet with her, and says that if he goes down that entire mountain without falling once, Sayuri should talk to Fuyuki. And he informs her that she wants just being her friend, so she has no ulterior motive when approaching Sayuri, so she accepts his proposal, but she asks Tsubasa not to leave her behind when going down the mountain. And then the two move on, and she is impressed to see that he is able to ski with the tips that the teacher gave Tsubasa, and when he arrives at the beginning of the mountain, he manages to go down it without falling once. However, when he looks back he sees Sayuri coming towards him without being able to stop, so he tries to shout to her what the girl should do, but she can't hear him. And then Fuyuki manages to reach her in time and teaches her how to stop the boat safely, then Tsubasa runs worriedly towards the two, but Fuyuki says they are fine. Then the teacher gets angry with the two for skiing alone, and so he decides to go and explain himself, and asks Sayuri to stay out of this, after all he was the one who induced her to ski with him. And when leaving them alone, Sayuri takes the opportunity and thanks her for the help that Fuyuki gave her, and also apologizes for having been so cold towards her until then, and on the way back home, Fuyuki comments to a friend that that day was very good, because besides skiing she also made friends with Sayuri, but she gets jealous when she sees that Tsubasa and her are so close. And the next day, Tsubasa wonders if he will be able to sing another day of school with all this snowfall, what's more, he complains about being sore from skiing the day before, and upon hearing his laments, Tsubasa's grandmother states that to become an inhabitant of Hokkaido he needs to have determination. I'm dying to send the boy a link in bio. In this he guarantees that he will do his best, but even before arriving at school Tsubasa starts to get a cold, and screams in despair in the middle of all that cold, and for him that could already be considered torture. And when he least expects it, he is thrown aside by a car, and when he can't get up, he starts to lose hope. However, when thinking about Fuyuki, he believes that she would be able to face this blizzard and go to school normally, even on turbulent days like this. And as he thinks more about her, he begins to say goodbye to Fuyuki in life, as the cold was already killing him, but she gets out of a car in front of him and warns him that he shouldn't walk 
around in all this blizzard. And then she tells him to get in the car so they can go to school together. But he remains static and asks if that would be the afterlife. So Minimj pulls him into the car and then he apologizes for bothering her. And upon seeing him, Fuyuki's mother states that it is indeed too cold for him to walk to school. So she suggests that Tsubasa relax and be at ease. And upon seeing her mother for the first time, he notices that she it's another gyro. And in addition, Tsubasa notices a great physical similarity between the two, so Fuyuki comments that the car must be too cramped for him, since Tsubasa lives in a mansion, and upon hearing this, her mother asks if he would be the rich kid, that Fuyuki talks about so much, and seeing them talking so much about him, Tsubasa feels nervous, and then her mother asks if he had a girlfriend in his homeland, and to avoid the question he uses his muscle pain as an excuse, and says he tried too hard in ski class, and upon becoming aware of his condition, Fuyuki comments that she won't be able to abuse him so much for now, as he feels that she expressed herself in a somewhat suspicious way, and then her mother states that Fuyuki is very resistant, and that's why she could handle it, all day without stopping, and when he sees that his mother says even worse things than her daughter, he gives up everything, and answers her question by saying that he doesn't have a girlfriend, and upon discovering this, she says that they are wasting him, and to end the drought in boy she offers her daughter. Fuyuki then asks her mother to stop embarrassing her in front of Tsubasa, but her mother says that he is an adorable boy and that he reminds her a lot of Fuyuki's father, so she believes that Tsubasa and her daughter would make a beautiful couple, as both go very well with each other. And when Tsubasa sees her so excited, she doesn't know what to say, so Fuyuki catches her mother's attention again, telling her to stop, and then she says she was just happy to meet the boy her daughter talked about so much, and that's why he ended up getting a little carried away. And upon seeing Fuyuki angry for the first time, Tsubasa feels that he must be careful not to make her like that, and in the middle of the trip her mother brings up the subject again, and comments, because he is from Tokyo, he probably hasn't experienced a blizzard, strong like this before. And then Tsubasa states that he doesn't even know how the school is open even in this weather, so Fuyuki explains that for the school to close, the blizzard needs to be even worse than that. And then Tsubasa explains that if a blizzard like this arrived in Tokyo, people would act as if the world was about to end, and speaking of which, Tsubasa says that the fact that people are so used to the cold there, made him think that they would go out on the street even then, but Fuyuki and her mother deny this, and as they continue the journey, Fuyuki's mother comments that children who don't have a means of transport to go to school ask their parents or someone else to take them there, especially in winter, and as for Fuyuki, she explains that she tends to dress lightly to maintain her good appearance, so when it's very cold she doesn't even leave the house, and upon Upon hearing this Tsubasa wonders what exactly her grandmother meant by the true inhabitant of Hokkaido. Fuyuki's mother then comments that dressing in winter is very expensive, as all the accessories at this time of year cause a lot of expense for everyone, and so Fuyuki says that she wants to work to be able to buy the clothes she wants, after all, it's her allowance. It is not enough. However, her mother states that she is still too young to think about work, and upon seeing their interaction, Tsubasa feels that they form a very united family. However he believes that being a gyro in Hokkaido must really be very difficult. And to try to cheer them both up, he assures them that they are beautiful the way they are, and when they hear this, they turn red, and say that this cheap flattery won't work, and Tsubasa feels that she ended up talking too much, as usual. And well, they finally get to school, and then he thanks them for the help they both gave him on the way to school, and Fuyuki's mother offers to give him a ride once again if the blizzard intensifies again. And after leaving the car, her mother comments to Fuyuki that her last move on the boy was very good, with that said she says goodbye to her mother and runs to the classroom with Tsubasa, and on the way they notice Sayuri approaching them too, and when she sees her Fuyuki jumps to hug her, and then Sayuri feels her muscles ache with her sudden action, then Tsubasa goes to her and says that she also has several sore muscles, and she suggests that this happened because they are still beginners in skiing, and while the two talk, Fuyuki stands aside just listening to the conversation, and then she asks the two to stop acting so friendly without including her, but Sayuri says that they are not being that friendly towards each other, and after that, they go to the classroom, and Fuyuki comments that Tsubasa got some cold weather equipment now, and he explains that it is practically impossible to live in Hokkaido without being protected from the region's extreme cold, and what's more Tsubasa reveals that he felt bad asking for her blanket all the time, but upon hearing this, she says she has no problem lending her things to him, and to prove it she gives him another piece of equipment to keep him warm, and then he feels a strange feeling when he sees him 
himself getting along with a gyro after all in Tokyo he would never have an opportunity like that. And then she comments that she needs a new lipstick so he suggests that she buy another one after class but he uses local slang in his sentence and Fuyuki immediately notices that he is starting to speak more like someone from Hokkaido. In this he realizes that she is right and Fuyuki states that now he is also an inhabitant of Hokkaido just like her and upon hearing this Tsubasa remembers what her grandmother had said and then Sayuri enters the middle of the conversation and says he shouldn't use Fuyuki as an example of a Hokkaido resident. And upon hearing this, she assures that she is 100% born and raised there and then Sayuri says that she is too and yet she doesn't usually use a lot of local slang or the local accent plus she's not that good at skiing either or winter sports and many inhabitants are like her. And then Fuyuki explains that her family and relatives from Sapporo use Hokkaido slang but upon hearing this Sayuri says that her relatives in question don't use such slang, in this case only her grandparents use them. From this, Shiki deduces that the way they speak varies depending on the place, the family, and the age of the people, and when he notices her more, he notices that Sayuri brought her video game to class, and then she says that she brought it by chance, therefore he wouldn't need to play with her if he didn't want to, but Shiki says he does want to play. In this he explains to Fuyuki that Sayuri is his gamer teacher, and then he asks her to become a student too, and although she doesn't know what exactly he is talking about Fuyuki decides to join in too. And with that resolved, Sayuri arranges to meet them at Tobu after class, and once there they introduce the place to Shiki, and he notices that Tobi is in fact a huge place, but Sayuri deduces that the stores in Tokyo are still more sophisticated than that. And then Shiki confirms that the stores in Tokyo are indeed more technological, but he still feels that that mall is different, after all it is more spacious than the malls in Tokyo. Furthermore, Shiki comments that the atmosphere there is very peaceful, therefore, they are able to relax, and then they start the game, and upon seeing Fuyuki winning so easily, she and Sayuri celebrate their victory. And meanwhile Shiki decides to go to the bathroom, and Fuyuki asks if she would like to go and see the cosmetics when they leave, Sayuri agrees, and says that they can buy contact lenses together, after all this is another one of Hokkaido's expensive items. And then Fuyuki agrees to buy lipstick and shampoo too, and seeing her so excited Sayuri claims that she is a nice girl and she apologizes once again for having been very grumpy with Fuyuki at school. And after this brief dialogue, Shiki returns to the table where they go shopping for cosmetics and the two make it clear that they only bought the products that Shiki recommended and upon seeing the size of the responsibility he already apologizes in advance if the products are bad. And upon returning home, he begins doing his English homework but he wonders if he should hand it in in class, so Shiki sends a message to Fuyuki and asks about it. And then she says she's in the shower and sends him a photo, and Shiki apologizes for having texted her while Fuyuki is in the shower, but then she sends another photo, only this time showing more things. At this point, Shiki states that his studies are over, after all, his focus was on playing for Vasco after seeing something like that, and as for Fuyuki, she is eager to hear his answer about this photo. And then Shiki just says informally that she did a great job taking that photo, but right after saying that he wonders if he sent the right answer, and then she starts calling him. And when she answers, she discovers that he was actually blushing when he saw her photos, so he decides to leave his cell phone facing down and talks to her as if he were on a normal call. And then she comments that she doesn't usually use the bathtub every day, after all that would ruin the family's budget, and speaking of baths she comments that there are many hot springs in Kidami, and Fuyuki suggests that he visit one one day. He confirms that he will go, and then she takes the opportunity and suggests going with him. After his provocation she changes the subject and asks what he is doing, and Shiki says that she is doing her English homework for the day, after all. They would have to deliver the lesson the next day. And upon hearing this, Fuyuki almost has a heart attack, and says that she hasn't even started to do the first page of the task yet, and then their cell phones fall, and then she asks if he saw anything, and Shiki assures her that he didn't, because at the moment he she dropped her cell phone and he also dropped yours. And then Fuyuki says goodbye to him, and he immediately notices that the girl has become different from nothing, but he deduces that the reason for this has to do with the homework that she hasn't even started yet, and meanwhile Fuyuki regrets everything that happened, happened, and says she shouldn't try to do things she's not used to anymore. And then her mother enters the bathroom, and upon seeing her daughter on the floor she asks if Fuyuki is dizzy, and she says yes, just to hide it. And the next day, she ended up not being able to turn in her homework 
homework and this resulted in her teacher scolding her. And after that at a karaoke Fuka makes Tsubasa enchanted by singing looking at him in a suggestive way and he comments to Sayuri about the girl being an excellent singer. And one of the girls at the table tells Fuyuki that she always sings the same song when they go to karaoke and then she explains that she loves that song because it always makes her loud and meanwhile Sayuri starts a conversation with Tsubasa and asks if he comes to karaoke often and he responds that he only went a few times with his family so he says he's nervous about that environment, so he asks her the same question, and Sayuri says she's been to karaoke a few times but alone. And upon hearing that she frequents these environments alone, Tsubasa is amazed but makes it clear that he respects her way of being and acting, however unusual it may seem. And then Sayuri regrets her loneliness and tells him that the boy is being too honest with her, so they start looking for another song to sing, and then Fuyuki suggests helping Tsubasa and Sayuri with choosing the song they will sing. 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 And after that, they take a break to eat, and while talking about school exams, one of the boys has the idea of them having a student party, and in the meantime the girls talk about nails and things like that. As for Fuyuki, she comments that Valentine's Day will soon arrive, and then one of the boys says he is not interested in receiving chocolates, but when one of the girls suggests giving him a chocolate as a courtesy, he decides to accept. And as for Tsubasa, he wonders if Fuyuki will give chocolates to anyone, and then the boy next door asks asks her to give him chocolates, in which she confirms that she will make a lot of chocolate that year, and speaking of that subject, the girl next door asks how many chocolates she got last year, and Fuyuki reveals that she received around 60 chocolates, but distributed them to her colleagues, and when Tsubasa hears this, he feels relieved to discover that she doesn't just give chocolates to one specific person, and then everyone notices his serene expression, and a girl asks Sayuri if she usually makes chocolates at that time too, and she replies that she doesn't do that, as she usually saves her money to spend on her hobbies. And upon seeing her being so sincere, another girl comments that she finds it hilarious how Sayuri isn't afraid to say what she really thinks, and then everyone around starts laughing. Then a boy asks Tsubasa if he got chocolates from any girl when he was in Tokyo, and he says he only got them from his family, and after they finish the karaoke session, Tsubasa comments that he had a lot of fun talking to everyone, and says he was I did it for going to that meeting. And upon noticing that they are both happy, Fuyuki proposes to invite them to the next meeting with their colleagues, and during the conversation, Tsubasa notices that Sayuri would like to say something that she ended up not saying, but she asks him to forget it. And halfway back home, Fuyuki comments to him that the boy sings very well, and while they talk, Sayuri is distracted by looking at her cell phone and looking at some chocolates to give to someone. And the next day, she goes back to the games, and when she remembers that she must buy the chocolates, Sayuri decides to leave the matter alone, as her game is more important than that. But soon after, she changes her mind, and decides to go to a store to buy chocolates, and when she gets there, Fuyuki finds her, and tells her that she is looking for ingredients to prepare her chocolate. And as for Sayuri, she makes an excuse and says she's just there to buy nail polish and some cosmetics, and to disguise it even more, she asks Fuyuki for help in choosing the best products. And when she finishes shopping, Fuyuki talks to her about Valentine's Day, and asks what Sayuri Yuri's favorite chocolate is, and upon hearing this, the girl blushes with shyness, but replies that she likes ganache, among other brands. And after talking briefly about chocolate, Fuyuki says goodbye to her, and says that she needs to go buy other ingredients, and then Sayuri asks to go shopping with her too, and as a way of disguising it, she says that she just wants to buy these ingredients to make chocolate, to Fuyuki. And when they leave shopping, Fuyuki is willing to help her if Sayuri needs some help with preparing the chocolate, and after that, Sayuri asks if Fuyuki is interested in giving chocolates to Tsubasa, so she asks why Sayuri talks about Tsubasa in this context. And then the girl explains that Fuyuki and him get along very well, and Fuyuki says that she's just his friend, and when she feels invasive, Sayuri apologizes and says that this subject came into her mind out of nowhere. However, Fuyuki says that everything is fine with that, and then the two say goodbye, and agree to see each other at school the next day, and meanwhile, Tsubasa continues studying 
studying and notes that she has already managed to study all the material that will be on the exam. And as for Sayuri, she receives a text from Fuyuki asking if she's still awake and then she replies that she usually plays late so she's always awake. Then she addresses the main topic of the conversation and asks what is the best way to make chocolates in a way that isn't so difficult and then Fuyuki tells her to take the chocolate and chop it with a knife into mini pieces. And then she tells her to boil the cream twice. Once that's done Fuyuki tells Sayuri to add the chopped pieces of chocolate to the pan and stir until they melt. And when doing all these procedures, Fuyuki tells her to put the dough to cool in the fridge for two hours. After all this, Sayuri asks how her chocolates are, and Fuyuki says that she will only see them at school the next day. She then comments to Sayuri that she made 70 chocolates, and then the girl is amazed at how many friends Fuyuki will present with all these chocolates, and she states that her friend's motivation is really admirable. However, Fuyuki says that by doing this, everyone is happy, and what's more, her friend's reaction to seeing her chocolates also makes her more determined to make them, and with that she believes that she ends up having more fun than the others. Your own friends. And then she asks Sayuri who she is thinking about when making these chocolates, and Sayuri tells her not to make her say these things out loud, after all she had already made it clear that she is making the chocolates for Fuyuki. And when I hear it again, Eiji the girl gets excited, but she asks who else Sayuri will give chocolates to, and then Fuyuki starts talking about Sayuri and Tsubasa, and before saying anything compromising, the girl ends up bumping into things, and shits with all her chocolates. Then Sayuri asks what happened, and Fuyuki explains that she spilled soy sauce on all her chocolates, and then she asks Sayuri not to worry about it and just focus on preparing her chocolate. That said, she turns off her cell phone to clean up the mess she made in the kitchen, and the next day, Tsubasa goes to school complaining about not having having slept much at all and says that she stayed up late studying. However, he tries to fix his day by going to his locker, and as expected he didn't receive any chocolate, and when he arrives in the classroom, Fuyuki goes to him and gives him a different chocolate that he would never be able to find in Tokyo. And in the middle of all this, Sayuri appears there, and Fuyuki gives her a shocking one too, and when one of the boys receives the chocolate, he comments that it is not homemade like usual, and then Fuyuki explains that it was produced by him, suspended, due to some small unforeseen events. So she tells him to accept that chocolate without complaining, but the cat continues to grumble and says he is disappointed with that, and when he notices that she didn't make homemade chocolates this year, Tsubasa wonders if something happened. And as for Sayuri, she goes to the complainer and states that she will beat him if the boy talks to Fuyuki like that again, and after that, they go to the first class, and then Tsubasa notices that Fuyuki is very thoughtful about something. And at the end of the class, the students are informed about a break that will occur in the clubs due to exams, so they should just go home now, but Tsubasa and Fuyuki are left to take care of some final cleaning touches. And then he comments to her that it's strange to hear the school so quiet, after all before they were able to hear the band rehearsing nearby, to which she comments that they are in fact alone there now. And upon hearing this, Tsubasa becomes embarrassed, and decides to change the subject by thanking her for the chocolate, and then she suddenly starts crying, so he asks her to tell him what is happening, if she doesn't mind. And while they talk, Sayuri stays in the corner listening to everything, and in the end Tsubasa becomes aware that Fuyuki's chocolates were ruined by her, and she comments that she still had hopes of rescuing some chocolates, but they were still messy and not at all attractive, and so she decided not to give them to anyone. And then Fuyuki says that she's just crying because she disappointed everyone, after all they were waiting for her to bring the homemade chocolates, just like she always did, and Fuyuki explains that when she asked a friend something strange on the phone, she ended up bumping into everything without wanting to. And then Tsubasa decides to comfort her by playing a song on the piano, and upon hearing it, Fuyuki notices that it was the song she sang at karaoke that day, in which he explains that he has been studying the piano for a while, so he managed to get the song out by ear very easily. And then Tsubasa asks how his performance was, and Fuyuki says that he nailed it, but she finds it strange why he chose to play that specific song, and Tsubasa says that she always cheers him up so now it was his turn to cheer him up there. Then she claims that he actually managed to cheer her up and then Sayuri decides to go to them to deliver her chocolates too. Fuyuki tries to leave them alone but before Sayuri gives her a chocolate. And upon seeing this scene, Tsubasa is disappointed because he thought the chocolate was for him. But right after thinking that, Sayuri also presents him with some chocolates and she comments that he did very well on the piano just now and after that the three decide to eat the chocolates together.
together. And the next day in class, the teacher informs them that they will have their final exams next week, so they must give their all. Tsubasa comments that he will only take the most difficult lessons now, after all, he has already studied all the subjects that will be on the test. And when he looks to the side, he sees Minami complaining about the final tests having arrived so quickly. Tsubasa shows that he likes these tests a little, after all it is these tests that will tell if his efforts were worth it. And when he realizes that he seems like a prim and boring boring guy, he apologizes to her, but Minami praises him, and says that he really must be like that, so she invites him to have a study party at her house. And when he gets there, he comes across Sayuri too, and then she asks why she's there, and Minami explains that the more people, the more fun the study party will be, but Sayuri deduces that she's actually not into it at all, to study. But Minami assures that she is really very worried about the final exams, however she believes that she will do well having Tsubasa by her side, after all he is very intelligent, in this he is willing to help them, after all, while he teaches them, he will also learn, so it's a fair exchange. And when they arrive at her house, Minami informs them that her parents are at work and her younger sister is in dance class, but upon hearing this, Sayuri states that Minami has nothing to do with an older sister. She finds this statement strange, but asks them to wait in the room while she gets something to drink, and on the way, Tsubasa comments that he has been there before, so he knows where Minami's room is. And upon Upon hearing this, Sayuri immediately thinks nonsense, but he explains that they actually ended up not going to the bedroom, instead they both stayed in the living room watching a movie, and then she describes him as a sneaky pervert. However, he claims that they didn't do anything, having said that they go to the room, and soon notice that the place is Minami's face, and Tsubasa gets slightly tense, as he has never been in a girl's room before. Then he starts to have inappropriate thoughts about her, and decides to control himself a little, but his reaction was enough for Sayuri to notice that he was thinking about the wrong thing. Then the girl finally appears with the drinks, and when they sit down, Sayuri praises Minami's choice of drink, but Serbesa is unaware of that brand of soda, so Minami serves him a glass, and when drinking the soda, Tsubasa is delighted with the I like. And she explains that this drink has existed since the beginnings of Hokkaido, therefore it is the best known drink in the place. Tsubasa says that it is the excellent drink for a study party. With that said Minami decides to start by asking each other questions. And then Sayuri asks what the topic will be, and Tsubasa suggests that they talk about world history. Minami asks him to start, and to start with something simple he talks about a certain belief, where his followers believe in the absolute will of God, and also believe that the salvation of all individuals has already been determined in advance by God. And this belief would have been advanced by a Christian theologian named Calvin. Having said all this, Tsubasa asks what the name of this doctrine he just described described is. But before they respond, he gives a tip and says that the place they usually go to has the same name as the doctrine, to which Sayuri responds that the doctrine is called predestination. And when answering the answer correctly, she takes the book and contextualizes it about the passing of a law in England in 1559, passed by Elizabeth I, and the basis of the law, pre-written standards for worship and prayer in the Church of England. Given all the context, she asks how this event is known, and Tsubasa states that they know it as, the act of uniformity, and after he answers the question, Sayuri asks Minami to take the book and ask the next question. However, the girl starts to have a problem, and to divert the subject Minami informs them that in the past Kidami produced 70% of the world's mint, and upon hearing this, they find the story interesting, but wonder what she is talking about. Our Minami explains that she just heard this information from her father, and then Sayuri says that she wasn't sticking to the questions in the book, and Minami says that she was just just trying to impress them. In this Tsubasa motivates her, and states that she is capable of progressing in her studies if she tries, and then he decides to ask the next question in her place, and at the end of the study session, Minami feels her head spinning, and reveals that she has never studied, as much as that day, but Tsubasa says that both she and Sayuri tried very hard, having said that he looks at the clock, and then he notices that it's past time to return home, and to avoid getting scolded, he hurries, but when he tries to open the door, door he ends up face planting Minami's mother's breasts. So she decides to take him home by car, and on the way he explains that he was there studying, and then apologizes for the inconvenience, but she says that she has no problem giving him a ride, after all Tsubasa lives nearby. And then she changes the subject, and says that she found out from her daughter about him being very good at the piano, and Tsubasa says that she has been practicing since she was little, and as they talk, she explains that her daughter went through a very difficult situation.
situation at the Valentine's Day, and that made her worried about what Minami would do when she got home. However, the girl came back smiling a lot and couldn't stop talking about the incident with Tsubasa and the piano. And upon hearing so many compliments, he blushes, but she thanks him for making her daughter happy on that difficult day. And after that, they finally arrive at his house, and she notices that Tsubasa's house actually appears to be a castle. And then he gets out of the car and thanks her for the ride, but before leaving, she gives him a soda as a gift to reward him for his hard work that day. And when she leaves, his grandmother appears at the door angrier than a dog without its vaccinations, and the next day before leaving for school, she asks him to throw out the trash, and on the way he remembers the scolding he gave her. Took him the night before, where she tells him to follow her rules, after all Tsubasa is at her house. In this he admits his mistake, and then she says that she will leave this incident aside, however she makes it clear that she will not forgive another mistake like that, and returning to the present, he notices an unknown girl right in front of him, and he is delighted with her beauty, and then the girl uses a tree branch to scare away the crows that were trying to tear up the trash, and then she notices his presence, and says that Tsubasa can leave her trash there in the basket, as she has already taken care of the crows. And when he arrived at school, he describes the girl to Minami, and then she deduces that he is talking about Rina, so he asks if she knows this girl, and Minami says that she loves Rina, as she is a model who won the beauty contest twice in a row, and because she is very beautiful, she is extremely famous in that school, and then Minami says that when she reincarnates, she wants to be a gyru just like her greatest idol, and although the girl is beautiful, Tsubasa notices that she is not up to the standards of Japanese women. Then Minami invites invites him once again to a study party at her house, but Tsubasa says that she won't be able to do that, as now he will have to study alone until the end of the tests, but he says that this doesn't mean that he doesn't like study with them, and although she finds that situation very annoying, Minami understands, and so Tsubasa feels that she shouldn't tell her about her grandmother's fury, as that would make her worried about him. Then Minami says that she will ask Sayuri to study with her, but upon hearing this, the girl refuses too, because when he left, they were just talking and didn't study anything, so she is afraid that this will happen again. And when the break takes place, Minami tries to go eat with Sayuri, but she tells her that she is busy thinking about game strategies, but Minami sits with her anyway, and says that she won't disturb her. Then they notice that Tsubasa went somewhere when taking the break, and Sayuri notices that Minami still seems to be angry with Tsubasa for refusing to go to the study party, but upon hearing this, Minami disagrees, and states that she would never stay. Angry about something so silly. And meanwhile, he continues his studies at the library, and explains that he decided to try the library to add a change of pace to his life, but suddenly he starts to hear the noise of someone snoring, and when he looks to the side, Tsubasa comes across Rina taking a nap. Then he notices that she looks beautiful even when she sleeps, but she wakes him up and sees her looking at her, and then Tsubasa notices that she is losing focus on her studies, and decides to get back to what matters, whereupon Rina goes to him and scares him with her sudden appearance. And she explains that she is part of the library committee, so she is responsible for that entire area at the moment, so she can sleep there peacefully, she just has to approve it herself. And then Tsubasa notices that Rina was just worried about him catching her sleeping, so he makes it clear that he doesn't mind her sleeping there, and when she notices him better, Rina realizes that he has a very good posture and starts to ask some questions to the boy. But soon after she remembers that he is studying, with that said she wishes him good luck in his studies and leaves the library, and after that, he returns home, whereupon his grandmother explains that he needs to strengthen his mental strength, as upon arriving in Hokkaido, he began to let his guard down a lot. And to help him with this, she calls him to a tea ceremony, as this will help him eliminate his carnal urges, and she explains that since they arrived in Hokkaido they have not yet had a tea ceremony, so the technique is must have decreased. But Tsubasa claims that the tea ceremony techniques are like riding a bicycle, so there is no way to unlearn them, and before they start the ceremony, someone rings the doorbell, and when he goes to answer it, he comes across Rina, who he went there to deliver his neighborhood bulletin. In this Tsubasa discovers that in in fact, they are not neighbors, and when the girl notices the Japanese clothes on him, she is completely enchanted and hugs him, and soon after, his grandmother goes there and asks what the boy is doing. Then he tries to calm her down, and says that he's not doing anything wrong, and then Rina apologizes to his grandmother too, and explains that she 
ended up slipping, but Cerbesa held her to keep her from falling to the floor. He notices that she has started to act differently now, but his grandmother is convinced that everything is fine, and apologizes for having shouted at them both, and when the girl leaves, his grandmother comments that she is the the first time he sees Rena. As before, the person who brought the neighborhood bulletin was the owner of the house. That said, she calls Tsubasa to return to the tea ceremony, but he keeps watching the girl leave, but when called once again he closes the door and hurries, and then his grandmother explains that he lowered the door again. Guard, so he no longer needs a tea ceremony, but rather more awareness of the danger he is in. And then she orders him to be at least in the top 10 students in his next test, otherwise she will send him back to Tokyo. So the next day I leave the house can't believe what's happening and Tsubasa thinks that getting an A might be a bit much, but he understands everything that led to this, and since he's in it all he can do is do his best, and in that while he she's thinking about a lot of things out of nowhere, Tsukua comes to him and then says a very sweet good morning, so he asks her what she's doing there and she says she was waiting for him, he asks why, but she says she was waiting because she would like to to talk some things with him, however Tsubasa is a little down because he actually actually doesn't feel confident talking to her at the moment and Tsukua feels that he's a little down about that she comments about yesterday and also asks if she got in the way with something but he starts to try to deny it and says that everything that is bothering him at the moment is based on his studies. Then she apologizes again and says that when it comes to history and Japanese places she can't control herself and with that they start walking on their way from school together but while he is by her side he starts to think what kind of fetish she has because not controlling herself when listening to the Japanese story is a bit strange in that she says she doesn't want to do it for apologizing but she offers to teach him and she says that all she's worried about is studying so she can help him but he says that his problem is a little lower and says that it involves classification and he understands that if her classification is downloaded doesn't make sense but he says that this is all a misunderstanding so he explains that her classification doesn't have much influence but the classification he needs to achieve is a a little high, but in that, Natsukawa tells him that if it's classification, he doesn't need to worry because since she when he entered school, she was always top one and the boy freaks out and she starts to feel it and says that maybe she can help him with some things and he realizes that idol, besides being more adored, is also the most intelligent, so he becomes remember yesterday's episode, when she solved one of the questions he was asking just by looking and he was even more surprised by the girl and he started to imagine that if it was senpai teaching him he might be able to be among the ten so he lowers his head and please ask senpai to teach him because he still wants to stay a little longer there in Hokkaido and with that she gives a very mischievous smile saying that he did very well and that she was able to feel his determination so she agrees to teach him and so the boy begins to be excited to learn from her and she says that in the next three days they will have time after class to study and she says that she will put him in the preparation room and he asks if it would be okay to do that but she says that normally not if it can, however, he is a special case and she will give him permission to do so. He asks her if it is okay to do these things, but she ends up saying once again that she is the librarian. So she is the one in charge and instead of just accepting, he keeps thinking that maybe she is abusing of her power and then she stops looking at him posing saying that from now on she will try to teach him properly but hearing the girl saying all this he starts to imagine that the two of them will not be bothered by anyone and will study alone in that room and this all already makes Tsubasa completely excited and meanwhile in the school bathroom Minami is talking to her friend that all she does lately is study and her friend Gal is also agreeing that the exams are ruining everything for her. And then her friend comes out of the bathroom before Minami and ends up seeing Tsubasa with Senpai and upon learning that he is approaching, Minami already feels that her stress will soon be relieved. So she runs out to find him but when she was all excited to call him she sees him talking with Natsukawa and feels a little remorseful and disturbs them both so she just listens while Natsukawa says goodbye and arranges to meet Sheik after class and after the two-part Minami goes after him with a somewhat dark aura. He even thinks it would be something but out of nowhere the girl starts to get energetic asking since when is he such a friend to Reina Senpai and she says she feels jealous of that because she always wanted to be close to someone with a Senpai and that's when she starts to fire a shower of compliments for the girl while you go upstairs only man manages to give her a completely yellow laugh and then he remembers that she had already said that she really liked senpai while they go to the living room. Tsubasa ends up telling her that Natsukawa is actually her neighbor and that's it. Leave the girl completely in shock 
talk and she even comments that this must be why they came together to school and he says yes but out of nowhere she stops and starts to feel something in her heart but she doesn't understand what it is and in that Tsubasa rushes her for them to go to class straight away and after class the teacher says that for the next three days they should go straight home to study as much as possible but he also says that the library will be open but warns them not to cause problems for anyone who is there and so he ends the class. So that's what he says to Tsubasa that they probably won't be able to study together again and he even gets down but tells her that he really won't be able to study with her because he really needs to focus on these tests and the girl is even understanding and asks I'm sorry for being so incisive like that and with that Tsubasa remembers the proposal that his grandmother made to him and feels bad for refusing Fuyuk. But it's the only way for him to achieve his goal and he thinks that no matter how kind I was the whatever she will end up blaming herself given what is happening between the two of them but even so he doesn't want her to find out and blame himself even more as all he can do to avoid this tragedy is to study as much as he can. He doesn't need to leave Hokkaido and he says he will fight for even more because if he just shuts up and reaches 10th place that won't change anything and then he goes to the room where Reina is waiting for him and knocks on the door and there he goes from inside she asks him what the password is and he a little shy says he's Gyurio coned with that she opens the door for him to enter and then he starts to think that she really loves the story because even her password is Motako so as soon as he enters she sits down and starts to pose asking what exactly she should teach him at that moment and at that he gets a little shaken but soon regains consciousness and says it's not the time for that so he asks her to teach him mathematics first and then looks at his results she says he's already doing very well and maybe he'll even be in first in his own year but he says that he still wants to have some kind of certainty so he asks her to analyze somewhere that he may have made a mistake so she is willing to do that so she analyzes that he made some mistakes due to lack of attention and so she also asks who his teacher would be and he tells the teacher her name and then she says that this teacher has a habit of sometimes repeating problems already given in her tests so maybe revising would be a good tip for him so while he answers the evidence she keeps looking at him until they are sent away from school because it's time to close the gates and as they leave the room he starts to thank her again. Then she gets curious and asks him why he's trying so hard and he starts to be a little shy but ends up revealing it and he says that if he doesn't try hard now he will end up not being able to see the people who are precious to him anymore and she is completely moved and says that she wants a reward if he manages to be at the top and she says who wants to meet with him if the kid comes in screw and at Minami's house she is laughing quietly while watching TV until her sister reminds her that she shouldn't be like this after all soon she will have tests to take and she says that her sister should be studying but she says it's not her fault because the inspiration to study is just not coming and then her mother makes fun of her saying that when Tsubasa was there she had a lot of inspiration. So she ends up making fun of each other and in the end they end up drinking guarana while she is in front forward. With her mother Minami asks if she has ever felt butterflies in her stomach or ice cream in her heart so her mother asks if she is sick or something and in the meantime Tsubasa continues in connection with Natsukawa while they both study and he starts to thank her she because even while she is at home she is still there teaching and she says she has a goal because she has her eye on the reward he promised. And in this completely shy atmosphere they say goodbye and go to sleep and in that his grandmother will bring him something to eat before in sleep and she asks how the his level of knowledge and he says he has no other choice because he still wants to stay there so the next day Minami is already happy that she doesn't need to study anymore after all today is the day of the test meanwhile our otaku gal is completely desperate taking the test as if it were a game and Natsukawa is saying a prayer and her friend asks why she is doing this after all she is always top one but she says she tried hard so she wants everything to work out and in the meantime Tsubasa is completely concentrated the test begins and at the end Minami starts to say that nothing went well and says that she will probably look for the library to study but as she walks she ends up seeing Tsubasa in front of her and runs after the boy but when she turns to catch up with him Tsubasa he had already disappeared in the corridor and even when she looks inside the library he is not there so at the end of the test the next day Minam asks Tsubasa where he went to study yesterday after all she followed him but he ended up disappearing and then the boy starts to get shy and Mina assumes that it was her mistake and she saw someone different so he says yes that was probably it and he thinks that she can't find out what he is doing with Natsukawa so he prefers to lie and so she suggests that after the 
test they go out to have fun and Tsubasa ends up agreeing and he says that until the test is over he will keep it a secret but after the end of the third day test Minami is completely down but Sayuri tries to give her some morals. But things don't go as expected and to make matters worse she asks how Sayori's classification was and it turns out that she was in the middle of all the students so Minami who was left at the bottom becomes even more depressed and she says that she should have studied more with Tsubasa and he wonders what the boy's placement was. Meanwhile he goes to find Natsukawa in that room and then he tells her, super excited that he came in third place. But he worries about what her placement was. After all, she wasted a lot of time on him. Teaching but she asks him to stay calm because as always she came first and in that she immediately reminds him of his promise and says that she is looking forward to this Saturday and on the day he tells his grandmother that he is going to leave the house so she says since he was very well classified she won't intrude and when he leaves he is wearing completely Japanese clothes and Natsukawa appears there and she is also wearing a full yukata. And he thinks it looks perfect because the clothes suit the girl very much. She says, who was very excited for this meeting in Japanese clothes and so they leave in this super cute atmosphere but while they are walking down the street Minami's mother ends up seeing Tsubasa and seeing that he is with a girl on what appears to be a date while they are walking around then he starts looking at the girl's face and she asks why he is like that and he says that this kimono suits her so much so he ends up realizing that he has nowhere to go and reveals this but Natsukawa says that just being with him it's already very good then. They finally decide the direction of their trip and in the meantime Minami receives a message from her mother where she tells her daughter that Tsubasa was on a date and this ends with the girl. And meanwhile, Minami calls Sayuri to spy on Tsubasa, and soon they notice that both he and Rina are wearing a kimono, and seeing her like that, Minami gets all silly, saying that her senpai looks adorable wearing those clothes, and what about Sayuri, she feels that the atmosphere between the two is very much like a date, and then Minami comments that she found out, by his mother that he would have a date with a girl, and upon discovering that the girl herself was the reindeer, she claims, who was very surprised, so Sayuri asks why Minami called her too, and Minami says that maybe this could be in her interest too, so Tsubasa and Rina leave the place, and Sayuri hurries to catch up with them, and when they arrive at at another store, Reindeer is delighted to see a giant bear, and then she explains that that is the Melon Kuma, the local mascot of Yubari Town, and although she shows excitement when talking about these bears, Tsubasa notes that he doesn't care about those things, but he is still willing to catch one of those bears for her, and Reindeer accepts right away, but when she notices him having difficulties to catch the bear, Sayuri starts to get angry, and decides to go there, and show him how it's done, but Minami holds her back, in this, Tsubasa finally catches a bear, and Rina recognizes it as Mint, one of the local mascots, and then Tsubasa regrets not being able to catch the bear, but she claims that she is already very happy with that bear. Small, and when observing him from afar, Minami notices that he is really a kind boy to all the people around him. Furthermore, she admires the fact that he doesn't get upset even though he lives in a different place and with people he loves. Initially didn't know him, then Minami states that he's like the coolest guy in the world, and then she states that, I would like to be like him. And when she notices that he is talking too much, she deflects and says that being like him is probably anyone's dream. Then Sayuri looks at her saying a bunch of random things, and explains that she wasn't paying attention because she was busy picking up the teddy bears, and meanwhile Tsubasa comments to Reindeer that it's time for the movie she wants to see. And then she says that she was having so much fun that she ended up completely forgetting. With that said they leave for the movie theater. And Minami immediately calls Sayuri to accompany them. But first she goes looking for a bag so she can store the bears who took the machine. And after that they lose sight of Tsubasa. So Sayuri tells her friend not to be so sad. After all, she gave him half of her bear winnings. And then they go back to looking for him. And on the way Sayuri says that there is an anime movie that she really wanted to see too. Then Minami suggests going to the cinema so they can see this film. And meanwhile, Tsubasa and Rina continue watching the film that the girl requested. And when analyzing it, he notes that the film film is about a person who struggles to establish his career, and so the protagonist. You begin to wonder what you will need to do to earn honest praise. After all, if she doesn't achieve this, she will need to continue just measuring herself against other people's expectations, and at the same time. Watching this dramatic scene, Reindeer starts crying, so they end the film and comment on it, and then Tsubasa asks if she cries very easily, and she confesses that it's actually very common to cry over anything, but Rina explains that, identified a lot with the main character of the film, because she also studies a lot, and even though she does well she rarely receives praise, and upon hearing this he also identifies with her. After all, he went through the same situation for a while, and it all started with a fight with his parents that resulted in him leaving. To Hokkaido, Reindeer asks him if he's an aggressive person, and he says no, but he's a little stubborn sometimes. Reindeer, she says, which is the opposite of this, as she seeks everyone's approval, as she is afraid of stopping being appreciated. And then Tsubasa states that if she is inspired when acting like this, it certainly has a positive side, because if she tries too hard, the people around will see it as an inspiration to improve themselves and hang themselves too, and to fix this positive idea on the reindeer head. He reminds her of the scene in the film where the leader shouts, 
shouted her true essence to everyone, in which Rena states that this was her favorite scene. And he says that this scene was also the one he liked the most, and then she notices that they are very similar in many things, from their attitudes to even the problems that each one faces. And when thinking about it this way, she says she is happy to meet someone who understands her very well, and he is slightly embarrassed. But he reciprocates the kindness by saying that he also enjoyed meeting her. Besides, Tsubasa says he is interested in getting to know her even more, and suddenly she asks if he already has a girlfriend, leaving him completely unresponsive. And meanwhile, Sayuri and Minami leave the movie theater, and soon come across Tsubasa and Reindeer together, in that he answers her question by saying that he doesn't have a girlfriend, and then Rina asks if it was difficult for him to socialize. In Hokkaido, after all, she would have been alone in his place. So Tsubasa states that in fact many things are difficult for him. They're in Hokkaido. However, he managed to make some great friends there who accept him as he is, so he doesn't feel so alone. And then Rina says, being relieved to discover that he is enjoying the place. So Tsubasa suggests that Rina go out with him and her friends next time. And upon hearing this, Minami appears immediately and says that she is willing to have this meeting. But Tsubasa gets scared and notices that they were listening. Their conversation all the time, and Minami states that it's not fair for him to take the initiative by leaving with Reindeer alone before her. Then Rina asks who these Grotas are, and he only introduces them as colleagues, but Minami corrects him and tells him to introduce them as important friends. And while they argue about it, Reindeer slowly begins to understand the dynamics between the three and Minami. Takes the opportunity to introduce herself and states that she has been admiring her for a while. Having said that, the girl begs Rina to shake her hand, because she's a big fan of the girl. And when they hold hands, Minami notices that Reindeer has very soft hands, and then she goes back to calling her a goddess. And Sayuri says that Minami is scaring the girl by acting like that. But Rina just laughs at the situation, and says that it makes sense for Tsubasa to consider them as important friends. And in the middle of the role of the four, Minami's mother appears all happy, and says that she sold several clothes that she put in the Marikari, and because of that she received bonus income. And after explaining the reason for her joy, she invites them all to go out to eat Yakiniku. And when heading to a restaurant, Minami's mother comments that their kimono will smell bad because of the smoke. But Rina explains that her kimono is washable, so she doesn't need to worry. With that, and as for Minami, she takes the first piece of meat, and when she tries it, Minami starts traveling talking about food, reindeer. She stands in the corner watching it and finding it strange, but when she tries a piece of meat, she also goes to another dimension. In this, Tsubasa notices that they speak in a way that really makes the meat even tastier, and upon seeing him thinking too much, Minami's mother sends him eat too, and suggests that he start with hanger steak. But upon hearing this, he asks what kind of cut it is, and she explains that in Tokyo and other places, this cut is known as skirt steak, and when eating it, Tsubasa also begins to travel and reports on every detail of the meat and states that Hokkaido is from. Indeed, an incredible place, because in your mind, when someone talked about meat in Hokkaido, people would only be talking about lamb meat or Jingasukan. And speaking of which, Minami informed that Jingasukan is a meat that they can eat at home, so they don't need to go to a restaurant to eat it. Tsubasa says that in his head this meat was actually something gourmet, but Minami's mother says it's quite the opposite, after all they usually have it. Even Jingasukan grills, and Minami claimed that this item is practically a must-have in any home in Hokkaido. And in the middle of the conversation, her mother teases the boy, saying that he must feel like he is in heaven to see himself surrounded by those adorable girls. But when mentioning the girls, nominally she leaves Minami out, who immediately complains when she realizes this. But her mother claims that she is family, so she doesn't need to praise her in that. Minami says that in Reindeer's case, she should have a special category since she always comes first in her class for tests. And upon hearing this, Sayuri asks how she knows so much, and Minami states that she is a big fan of Reindeer, and when she looks better at the girl, Sayuri starts to praise her too. Because in addition to being intelligent, the Reindeer is also beautiful, so she is practically genetically privileged. But upon hearing this, Minami states that she got everything wrong. After all, Rina worked very hard to build this image, as she is very careful with every detail of her appearance. And as for her intelligence, Minami says that Rina studies like crazy, and that that's why she always comes first, making her inspired to want do your best too, just to be like the reindeer, in which Sayuri says that Minami is right in her analysis, and apologizes for having interpreted things wrong. And as for Tsubasa, he reminds Rina about people looking up to her without her even realizing it, and says that this is a clear example of what he had said. And after the role at the restaurant, Minami asks if he is going out with reindeer, and he says no, because the date they had was for a good cause. Then Minami asks to be the next one to go out with him on spring break, with that said she joins the other girls, and Tsubasa notes that she is right, because they are really close to summer vacation and because this is the first time he will see spring in Hokkaido, Tsubasa says he is looking forward to this moment. And this was another video on the channel. If you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe and leave a like. See you in the next one.